May the Lord bestow upon us his blessing, mercy, grace, and wisdom now and ever to the age of all ages. Amen. Welcome back, everyone. <clears throat> it's good to see you. Hope you're having a blessed time. Um, we'll just uh, jump right into the talk of today. Uh, God willing, um, we'll talk a little bit about the gospel. Today is the second Sunday of the blessed month of Baba, and uh, we are basically going through this month, month which speaks of the power of God. Um, and uh, last week, we read from the Gospel according to St. Mark, chapter 2, about the healing of the paralytic man who the Lord revealed his power over sickness or over the body. And this week, we see the Lord's re revelation of his power over the creation. Um, in Luke chapter 5, uh, verses 1 through 11, we see the Lord um, allowing the disciples to catch a multitude of fish. And this um, passage actually, or this miracle happened with the disciples twice, um, once here and another time after the resurrection in the last chapter of the gospel according to St. John. Maybe another time we could compare the two circumstances and see how they were um, drastically diff different in the symbolism behind them. Um, but today we'll just focus on um, one, uh, one main phrase that the Lord asks the disciples to do before they catch this multitude. Um, <clears throat> and um, that verse is where the Lord says in verse 4, uh, launch out into the deep. And uh, before we get to that part, we see that the, the symbolism in the gospel oftentimes of the sea is the things in the world, the waves of the world, um, the, the constant turbulence, ups and downs, um, uh, having different circumstances in our life because we're in the world, we have a lot of ups and downs. Um, but for the Christian who is stabilized in Christ, it shouldn't be that much. At least our hearts shouldn't be fluctuating so many times up and down regarding our faith um, or our feelings uh, toward God or in our life. Um, am I firm in my relationship with him or not? Um, <clears throat> so sometimes if we are too fluctuating in our life, it could be um, because maybe we're too attached to the world or we're too much like the world, right? But as Christians, we experience a lot of these waves, but we shouldn't necessarily, as St. Cyril says, we don't live in them. We don't live in the wave, right? Um, so we need kind of like um, a, a car that is going over, you know, a lot of potholes. Um, we need good shock absorbers to minimize that turbulence, right? Um, so that doesn't mean... Oftentimes we can't avoid a lot of these ups and downs in our life, but we can um, do certain things um, to minimize the effect that happens inside of us because of them. Okay. Um, so the deeper we go, or like, for example, if, if you use the, the symbol of, of the sea again, the deeper you go underwater, the less you feel the wave, right? The less turbulence you face from the waves above you. Um, so one of the fathers explains this by just saying, when we humble ourselves or when we go down or go you know, beneath the surface, um, we go into the deep, it won't knock us down. The waves won't have any power over us, right? Um, <clears throat> so uh, this is why we constantly try to live um, a thankful life. Uh, as St. Paul says to the Ephesians, giving thanks always for all things to God the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Um, and that doesn't mean we become um, boring people or nothing excites us, but it means that nothing should have the power to shake, and shake our faith um, or, or our hope or our love um, or, and bring ourselves down. Um, as we mentioned before, the, the famous uh, verse that St. Paul says in uh, Romans 8, um, nothing can separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. So um, having said that, let's go 
a little bit more into the depth of the the command that the Lord gives to us, launch out into the deep. Um, <clears throat> so we know what the benefit is when we go into the depth, um, because sometimes we live maybe a little too superficially. Um, we focus on uh, our looks, we focus on our grades, our clothes, our possessions, our accomplishments, our perceptions, how many likes I have, how many friends I have, um, whether on Facebook or in person, we need to go to a deeper level um, <clears throat> and um, uh, as St. Paul says to the Colossians, whatever we do, we have to do it heartily to the Lord. Um, so um, I'll basically summarize one chapter from uh, His Holiness Pope Shenouda of Blessed Memory's book on the spiritual man where he talks about the spiritual person um, is deep or goes into the depth, right? So he talks, uh, and I'll just basically summarize, um, the different aspects in our life that we should strive to be deep in. Um, and if you want to read more, you know, um, please, by all means, um, uh, Pope Shenouda does a much better job <laughs> um, than, than, than me. Um, <clears throat> so um, the first thing he says, okay, go deep in your prayers. Um, it's not the number of prayers we, we recite, but the depth of them. And he gives the example of the parable of the Pharisee and the, pub, and the tax collector in Luke 18, um, where uh, St. Luke describes, he spoke this parable to them um, because they were trusting in themselves that they were righteous, right? So two temple, if you, if you, if you remember, two men went to the temple to pray, um, one Pharisee and a tax collector, and the Pharisee had, a nice long prayer, um, longer than the, the tax collector or the publican, um, mentioning all the good things that he does by fasting and giving. Um, <clears throat> but the, the tax collector stood afar off. Um, he, would, he, he would not feel worthy to raise his eyes toward heaven, um, but he beat his breast saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Um, and the Lord commended this type of person who goes to the deep in the prayer and only with a few words is able to come very close uh, to the heart of God. <clears throat> and that was because, as Pope Shunita says, um, it was out of a deep, contrite heart, like, like the Psalm 50, where we pray the sacrifices of God as a broken heart, a broken and contrite heart. These, O oh God, you will not despise. Um, so the person who feels broken before God or humbled or realizing their uh, state, that they are in need of forgiveness and mercy and strength from God. Um, <clears throat> and as St. Augustine says, for a clean heart to be created, when we say created me a clean heart, he says um, the, the unclean heart must be crushed or it must be broken, right? Um, in, in a sense of like to repent, right? Um, so. So I have to ask myself, when, whenever we stand up to God to pray, whether in church or at home or anywhere, um, where is my heart in prayer? Um, <clears throat> one of the priests of blessed memory, um, Abun Antonio Sinan, instead of saying, um, lift up your hearts in the liturgy, he would ask, where are your hearts? Because um, in Arabic, the, the words are almost the same. Um, but this is a reminder, where, where is my heart in prayer? Yes, I'm, I'm, I might be reciting the, the words, which is a good, uh, don't get me wrong, this is a very good practice that we have in our church, and our church teaches us to memorize prayers and to recite them and to, and to increase our discipline, which is very important, but we have to do that without forgetting um, to exercise our heart in, in the prayer. That's the whole purpose of why we, we pray. <clears throat> So that's the first uh, point. It's one of the longest. Um, but the second one, uh, he, he speaks of, um, actually, I put them out of order, but uh, the depth of giving. And he gives the example of Abraham who gave his son. He offered his son. The two mites of the widow who gave all she had. The widow of Zarephath who gave the last meal um, that she was preparing for her and her son and then die. She gave that to Elijah the prophet because he asked. The saints who gave everything, or the more they gave, um, <clears throat> we see that even more God gave to them in different ways. Um, even the saints 
who um, gave all they had and had nothing left and they sold themselves into, uh, as slaves so they could give more um, to the people in need. And even when they won back their freedom, they did it again. Um, so this is the, the, the person who goes deep in what they do um, and what they give. It's not just the superficial, um, but we give to God all that we have or all we can give. Um, <clears throat> so that's the depth of giving, the depth of service. St. John the Baptist, he had the great, one of the greatest services of all time to prepare the way for the Lord, in coming, God coming in the flesh. But he didn't have much time. He, he, his service... Um, was about six months, um, but it was one of the greatest services that man has offered to the Lord. Um, St. Stephen, um, the, the first martyr, the multitudes joined in faith because they couldn't resist the wisdom that, by which he spoke. And uh, his, uh, his speech and his martyrdom only comprised not even two full chapters in the book of Acts. But nevertheless, his example um, was, was very powerful for, for all of us and most likely for the life of St. Paul. We wouldn't have St. Paul if we didn't have St. Stephen to begin with. Um, <clears throat> so this is the depth of service. There's also a depth of study, like in studying the scriptures and studying the sacraments and studying the church fathers and studying um, how to grow in the spiritual life and studying like contemplation on the spiritual things. Um, learning for the sake of learning, even in school um, or at work, like the person who really wants to learn, right, goes, goes into the deep. They don't just do whatever they can to get the grade, right? Um, so this is the person who considers, who concentrates, who comprehends, who contemplates on, um, on the deeper things, right? So here Pope Shunoda is saying, um, if you're going to go to the deep in one thing, you're going to find yourselves going to the deep in a lot of other things that are good. Um, so um, like just to remind what we said so far, the depth in prayer, the depth in giving, the depth in service, the depth in studying. Um, there's also the depth in faith. Um, a lot of times doubts arise in our hearts, doubts concerning God, uh, doubts concerning God's care for us or concern for us, doubts concerning um, the church teachings um, or the power or effectiveness of the sacraments in, in, in my life or the spiritual discipline or whatever it might be. But we, sometimes these doubts um, cause our faith to weaken um, or that I prayed, but God won't answer this prayer or he doesn't care because of it, um, whatever um, that doubt may arise from. So we have to go deeper in our faith, um, uh, the evidence of things not seen. Um, so <clears throat> that's another thing that we can go deeper in. Um, we need to try to go deeper in our repentance and our confession. Um, the true repentance <clears throat> doesn't return back to the old way, like when a dog returns to its vomit, as, as the holy book says. Um, and we have the great examples of King David, St. Augustine, St. Moses the Strong, St. Mary of Egypt, all who offered a pure repentance that was very deep um, and transformative in their life, um, where they didn't return back to their old way of living. Um, finally, we need to be deep in our worship um, and in our love for God and others. Um, it's not Our worship doesn't just... Con consist of like the number of hours or days we fast, the number of prostrations we make, the number of chapters we read, but how? How do we do this? With what purpose of heart? Um, is it, is it uh, affecting us on, on a deeper level? Yes, we're like I said, we're supposed to keep the number and increase our discipline in those things. And sometimes that sacrifice um, before God is what um, kind of nudges God to grant us more grace so that we could go into the deep. So I'm not saying eliminate those things. I'm just saying make sure that when you do the things outwardly, um, you're uh, trying and asking God to, to make an inward change in you. Or else it would be like the Pharisees um, who, who just had the quantity but had no quality or depth, um, God forbid. 
Um, so how do we do this? Um, look for the meaning of, of why we do this prayer, why we sing this hymn, um, uh, struggle with God, wrestle with him until the day breaks and, and Christ is formed in you. Um, <clears throat> so uh, no one can say that I'm at a level where I don't need to go deeper. Um, uh, on the contrary, the more you say I need to go deeper, the more deeper you are. <laughs> um, so we all kind of struggle, say, okay, I'm here. Um, God help me to go even more. Um, and this is actually all tied to, to the depth of repentance. But when we break down the different aspects of our life, um, we see how like, we need to launch out into the deep more. Um, and some people say, but I've toiled all night. I've done all of these things and nothing has happened yet. That's, that's exactly when the Lord told the disciples to launch out into the deep. They toiled all night. And they didn't catch anything. They did everything according to the book. And they were experts in their job as, as fishermen. <clears throat> but the problem was they, they didn't have the presence of God. They didn't ask for God to bless. They didn't wait for him to command them to do something. And then they did. And, but when they did, when he came and they, he told them to do one thing, and despite their foreknowledge, despite their understanding of how to fish, he he didn't go by the book. <laughs> he just asked them to trust him and to do so and so. Um, and when they did, they, they couldn't even um, manage to, to uh, deal with all the fish that were coming into the net. And their nets were like almost going to break um, and they needed help uh, with the, because the grace of God was, was overflowing. Um, so all of us have the times where we feel like I've told I lot God um, and, and I have nothing to show for it in my spiritual life, in, maybe in my financial life or in my work uh, circumstances. I'm working very hard, but I don't see anything. Or I'm putting a lot of, uh, planting a lot of seeds, but I don't see any growth. Um, the Lord says, don't worry, launch out into the deep and the fruit will come. Maybe you'll see it, maybe you don't, maybe you'll feel it, but at least attempt to go into the deep with the Lord. Okay, um, so may the God give us uh, this great as a small, uh, short contemplation on these words. Um, I think the, the power in it is just to attempt. Um, so uh, like we were saying, um, maybe this week we can say, okay, I want to go a little deeper in my prayers. Um, uh, what am I going to do um, so that my prayer looks more like the, that of the publican rather than the Pharisee, or I want to go deeper in my give, giving like the two mites of the widow, um, <clears throat> or something that I can offer that I haven't offered um, in, in, in the depth. Um, maybe I want to go deeper in my service to prepare the way of the Lord for someone else, not necessarily myself. Um, maybe I want to go to the depth in, in the study this week. Um, say, okay, um, let me pick up something from the fathers or something from the church history or something from the sacraments that I'm not accustomed to, but I'm going to make an attempt to go deeper into it. Maybe I don't like it because I don't understand it. Um, so let me um, uh, submit myself to, to uh, offering the sacrifice of trying to study something that might not appeal to me at first. Maybe I need to go deeper in, in the faith and to, you know, um, ignore the, the doubts or circumstances around me and focus on my savior. Maybe I need to go into the depth this week of my repentance um, <clears throat> or my worship or my love for God so that it won't be in word or tongue, but in deed and truth. Um, and that applies not only to God, but to the others. So may the God of grace give us um, the ability to go into the deep so we can um, see with our eyes and feel with our hearts his abundant grace uh, in our life, uh, transforming us <clears throat> and allowing us to partake um, in, in seeing the grace of God manifest in our life. Uh, glory be to him now and for into the age of ages. Amen. Um, we'll uh, stop the